I feel like Chris Paul is a good comparison to the way I play. You know, he can handle the ball a little bit. You know, you know, he's a good playmaker, share the ball around. Um, he can score, though. He can score. Don't get it twisted. Don't Are get you it tough twisted. on your teammates like Chris Paul is? No. Okay. No, no, no. I ain't tough on my teammates <sighs> like that, you know. Because if, if I were to do the same, I don't want them, you know, on my back like that, you know. Jalen? What do you do to keep your life as normal as possible since you're really successful, but you want to be able to enjoy your childhood? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like... For me, since uh, I feel like it's easier when you're a kid because you still, if you're lucky, I feel like for me, I still have my friends that I had, you know, when Blackish started. And um, I've had the same friends, you know, family's always been the same. They've always treated me the same. Um, my neighborhood where I've always grown up, the school I went to, just everybody treated me the same, you know, since before Blackish. And I feel like um, the way my family, my friends treat me, I feel like that's just keeps me, you know, the same as when Blackish started. So I feel like that's what really keeps you grounded. And uh, um, if, if you don't have that, I feel like you'll be, you know, go off trace. But I feel like it's really important to have those, um, the people around you to, you know, surround yourself. So, Miles, I'm, I'm what's called a die easy fan. Like, it's the opposite of a die hard fan. Listen I just pick to new this, teams Miles. and new players. Listen to this. Listen, listen want, to this. Listen to what this adult like has to say. Well, I'll just jump off that bandwagon uh, onto a new one. So what team uh, is your team okay. in the NBA? So this this topic I've had to explain a lot because, you know, this is brought up my whole life. So I've had to explain this to a lot of people. I don't mind explaining it because it doesn't really make sense once you, you know, get into <laughs> it. But I, I was born in 2004, all right? So this is the year right after LeBron was drafted. So ever since, you know, my, my all my family are Lakers fans. Mm -hmm. But, because, you know, I'm from California. But I was always raised watching you know the lakers which my family showed me and then i was always watching the cavaliers lebron you know lebron was on the team cavaliers was doing good and i feel like that was the team that i've started watching when i was super young and i feel like um ever since lebron's went on to the heat back to the Cavs, i've always stayed a Cavs fan because that was like the first team i watched and that was the first team i became a fan of but since lebron's my favorite player i'll still support the team you know whatever team he's on but my favorite team will still always be the Cavs. And, but I'll support the Lakers, you know, because he's on the team. L.A., that's the, you know, um, city. And I feel like um, hopefully uh, hopefully they win this year. But, you know, I've always got to stay a Cavs fan. So if that doesn't make sense, I think it, I think it makes sense, you know, if I have to explain it to somebody. That makes, makes a lot more sense than being a die easy fan, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> now, I think you, you don't LeBron have to James... worry about explaining on this show because this guy <laughs> jumped bandwagons all of the time. Uh, no, all no, of the no. time. As an NBA junior reporter, who do you mm. think is the greatest player of all time? This is a, this is a tough call. I feel like I've always had this debate. I'm gonna mm. go with LeBron. I'm gonna go with LeBron Thank James. You. I feel like I feel like I, I, I you know when I say this, I don't want people being like, oh, you're only saying that because you're LeBron fan. I personally think if LeBron were to play a game versus Le, uh, Jordan. I would think LeBron would win. He could just obviously back him down. He could do whatever he needs. He's done it against every other opponent, and I feel like he can do it against Jordan. I know Jordan has really good defense, but if we're going one-on-one, -on -one, I got to go over LeBron. And I still say with the 5v5, 3v3, 1v1, so I got I I to go with my man LeBron. I agree as well. It's just different. Over time, players change. Just and evolved. I think right I now, like the, a game fine. has evolved past the era in which Jordan and Jalen Rose played. So here's my question for you, though. So you are, let me get this right. Yes. You're an NBA junior reporter. Yes. That's an official title that you have. Mm -hmm. So you basically work in the media just like Jalen and I do now, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, I'm uh, What are yeah. your responsibilities? Do you get paid? Do you have to go to meetings? <laughs> do you have to do conference calls? What does it mean being an NBA junior reporter? Uh, I have to, well, I mean, so basically the Junior NBA is a company that partners with the NBA, WNBA, and they do a lot of NBA clinics, you know, NBA cares with, you know, going to hospitals and, mm -hmm. and you know, supporting children, making sure that, you know, they have the teamwork skills, basketball skills. And um, I'm their junior NBA reporter. So basically what I get to do is I get to pretty much do what you guys do. I get to go to the games, interview the players. But I ask them more kid questions that the kids would want to know, what I would want to know. And I feel like, because I, I got to bring this idea up to the junior NBA, and I feel like when I was watching, when I'd be watching these games, nobody that would be asking them questions or asking them the questions that are super interesting for the fans' perspective, I feel like, for me, the kids. And um, I thought it was super important to, you know, ask them these questions that the kids would want to know. And yes, I do, I do meetings, you know, conference calls, all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Jaylen, what are some who of those harder? questions that you feel like the adults normally don't ask the players that you feel like kids will want to hear? The first thing that I thought of when I was in, you know, the meeting with them and what I've always wanted to see, I've always had to zoom in in the middle of the game and pause the game 
to zoom in and see what shoes mm. they're wearing. They don't they don't they don't talk about that stuff on the game. I'm trying to see what shoes they're wearing. Like LeBron, game seven of the uh of the NBA Finals 2016. I was trying to see what shoes he was wearing because those were unreleased. <laughs> you gotta zoom in on the shoes, bro. You gotta zoom in on the shoes. So I've always wanted to see that, and I feel like I'm the person that can deliver that message to the kids and the people who wanna know the fashion, everything that goes on other than the game. Well, you are living in Los Angeles. Now, you're a Cavs fan, but there's obviously a lot of focus in the NBA in Los Angeles right now with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard on the Clippers, Anthony Davis and LeBron James mm -hmm. on the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I lived there for a while. Jalen's lived there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Are the Clippers gaining ground in the minds and hearts of the L.A. sports fan? I think they are. They, I mean, they definitely are in terms of basketball. I just feel like in a culture-wise... I don't know if they're fully there yet, but in a basketball term, obviously, yeah. I, I think the Lakers Clippers are the top two teams in the NBA. Um, but for culture in L.A., like, you know, where I live and, and seeing my whole culture and everybody who's, you know, Lakers fans, Clippers fans, I feel like Lakers still the more, obviously, dominant uh, culture-wise. But basketball, it's a tough decision. I still think the Lakers are better, though. I still mm. think the Lakers. I feel like I was watching Summer League, uh, or not Summer League, preseason, and like LeBron dishing it to AD in the paint is just unstoppable. You can't you can't stop that. AD and JaVale McGee or Dwight Howard in the paint, that's just not stoppable. You can't stop that. I talked a lot about that as well. The Lakers size up front. And you mm -hmm. add Kyle Kuzma once he comes back from his injury. Right. He's 6'9 right. too. Right. I'm trying right. to tell people, Miles, that he's gonna help create a big three in LA with the Lakers. Right. And I think I think LeBron being point guard, hopefully he hopefully he is point guard because I don't know some of the games he wasn't playing point guard, but hopefully he is because that I feel like that'll just make the team even better. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN Plus.